Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, we are about to do something economically phenomenal. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by because today is a good one. We are going to take one piece of 12 by 12 cardstock and we're going to turn it into a mini journal that has 18 pages in it. Seriously, y'all, this is not smoke and mirrors. We're going to take one piece of 12 by 12 cardstock and when we're finished, we're going to have a mini journal that has 18 pages. And so here's what I'm talking about. I went ahead and created a box set of three and I'll give you a closer look once we get ready to go over what you're going to need to make it. So y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, so here is a closer look at today's project. Now I haven't decorated the outside yet because I haven't decided what I want to put on this, but this is a very handy little box for our mini notebooks. And I'm just going to take them out so that you can see that I have three in this box. I haven't really done anything in the way of decorating the insides of these, but on today's video, I'll give you a very good idea on how you can turn each and every page into a place where you can write a note. I've added pockets here, but you don't have to do that. If you want to have complete writing space on this and not just this section, you can certainly leave the pockets off. But these are just so stinking cute and so easy to make. We have page after page of writing space and page after page of embellishment space so that we can add little stickers and words of encouragement if we want. And then on the last one, same thing. You have page after page. In fact, you have a total of 18 places in these little books where you can write. And when finished, these books are three by four. So these are really nice sizes to be able to drop into your purse, tuck in your back pocket, drop in that briefcase. So many options with these. So here's what we're going to need. And I've already told you guys basically what you need. So depending on how many books you need, you need 12 by 12 paper. So if you want three books, you're going to need three sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. And then we're also going to make a box to go along with this. So we're going to need a piece for the box that measures eight by 10 and a half. So here's how we're going to get those pages for the book. We're going to take that 12 by 12 inch piece and we're going to cut it in strips of four. So I have three strips that measure four by 12. So then I'm going to take two of the strips and cut them at six. So I'll have four pieces that are six by four. Then I'll have this piece, which will be 12 by four, but I'm going to reduce it to nine by four. So to make that book, you're going to need four pieces that are six by four and one piece that is nine by four. So I'm going to use my nine by four inch piece and I'm going to score at one and a half, at four and a half, and at seven and a half. Then I'm going to take each one of these pieces and I'm going to score them at three. And now I can simply fold and burnish all of my scores. And so this is the actual jacket itself. So I think I'm going to go with this on the outside so that it stay in line with the other two that I have already made and I'll show you those in just a minute. So now that we have that pocket piece like this, I am going to go ahead and take my glue 
and add glue to the ends to create that pocket. And for these little books, I would use a lightweight to a medium weight cardstock. I wouldn't use a heavy weight because it might be too difficult to bend that book. So there's the jacket for our book. Now we're going to take all of our pieces and we're simply going to stack them one on top of the other. And when we do that, what happens is it causes everything to push outward. We're going to need to bring in our ruler and the finger blade or scissors or X-Acto knife, whatever it is you want to use. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So the largest part that is protruding, I'll remove. And make sure when you're doing this part, you have a nice fresh blade. Otherwise it'll get real ragged. And you'll notice that when you're cutting, it'll start to curl that paper if you're using a dull blade. So I'm going to take this and put it down because now I'm going to trim off about an eighth of an inch from the bottom because I don't want the inside pages sticking out at all from the bottom. So I'm just going to trim off a little bit. So now that we have our pages nice and trimmed, I can take my book and we can put our pages in our book. And you can see they don't stick out over the edge and they don't stick out over the top or the bottom. So now I can open this and I'm going to use my long arm stapler. Now you don't have to have a long arm stapler to do this, but I just happen to have one that I borrowed from Mike that I have failed to return and I'm just going to press and try to get as close to the center as I can. I'll come down and do the same thing. And now I can fold it, take my big old spatula and get everything nice and crisp. So now we have our little mini booklet. That's how simple it is to make these and then to decorate them however you want. Now I have made two of these already to go in our pack and I'll show you a simple way that I decorated these. What I did was on the pages that might have had bold prints, I just added some spaces where you can make notes and write. Now this isn't a necessary step, but it does allow you to use those papers that might have a very dark or a bold print on them. By laying down some writing spots, you're giving yourself more options with the papers in your collection. So I am going to show you guys how I decorated mine very quickly. And I have these stickers that I got when I was in Texas. And the store is called The Little Crafty Place in Spring, Texas. So I went in and went crazy. And all I'm going to do, I really don't need to do it with this one because the pages are fairly light. But I am going to go ahead and just take one of my stickers so that I can show you how this works. I'm going to take a sticker and then you can just place that sticker right there on the front and then you can just take a saying from a word book if you happen to have one and I'm going to take the one that says live, create, tell the story and I'm going to place that right there. So already I have a cute little front to my book. Now I have so many different stickers that I can just take a few. And now all I need to do if I want to is just go through my book. It's just add a few stickers. I have all types of stickers that I found. Some of them have nice little sayings on them. Some of them are just beautifully decorative pieces. So not every piece has to be a writing spot. You can actually take one of those little stickers and place it down and then you have it in your little mini book and you can write around it if you want. So many different things that we can do. We can take these little stickers here that say be happy. We can take that sticker and then you have this decorative element already on the paper. You can take that and just place it inside of that decorative element so you can work with the design of your paper 
if you decide to work with stickers. But what I have, y'all, are just a whole bunch of stickers that I can use to go back and decorate. At the time that I was in the store, the little crafty place in Spring, Texas, and buying these stickers, I really had no idea what I was going to do with them. But I knew that if I ever made like books or journals, that these would actually be great ways for me to use those little stickers to add writing spots. So I'm not sure if the store has an online presence or not, but it is the little crafty place in Spring, Texas. And they had so many wonderful things that we can use in our crafts. The next time that I'm in Texas, which will be in September, I truly intend to go back. So I'm going to go ahead and make a box because I do want these to be nice and beautifully presented. So I have this Kaiser Craft paper and I love the saying at the bottom. It's actually what I'm going to use on the front of the box. It says yesterday's stories are today's greatest treasures. So I am going to use my trimmer and I am going to trim this because it's going to be the word saying on the front of my box. And then I know that I need a piece that is 10 and a half by eight. So I am going to go ahead and cut my eight inch piece. And then I'll cut it down to 10 and a half. So we have a piece that is 10 and a half by eight. And on the 10 and a half inch side, we're going to score this at one and one half, at five, at six and a half, and at 10. Then we're going to rotate it to the eight inch side and we're going to score at one and a half, at five and three quarters, and at seven and a quarter. So we are just going to fold and burnish all of our scores. Now this is more of a lightweight to medium weight cardstock, but it is going to work for this project. I really want to use it, so I am going to go with it being just a little lighter than I would usually prefer. So now that we have all of our scores folded and burnished, we're going to have this narrow strip here. We're going to remove that corner rectangle. We'll have a larger rectangle here and then a smaller rectangle there. We're going to go ahead and remove all of these pieces. So here at the bottom where we have the one, you can go ahead and do a slight angle in and remove that piece. Then we're going to do the same thing up here. We're going to cut and we're going to remove this piece. So, so far your piece should look like this. Now we're going to go along the bottom and we are going to angle cut wherever we have a score. So go up to the score mark and angle down all the way across. And so now your piece should look like this. We're going to rotate it and we're going to go to the second score mark and we're going to drag straight down all the way across. Sometimes it's a little hard for me to see my score marks. I don't know about you guys. So now that we have it like this, we're going to go ahead and fold these two pieces in and we're going to reduce these tabs. Then we're going to go ahead and angle the tabs. And so now we're going to take one of these tops and fold them in. And the way that you know which top it is, this is the glue flap. So we're going to go to the opposite end and take that flap and fold it in. So before I do that, I am going to just trim away a little bit so that it won't hit that score mark. I'll add just a little bit of glue. 
fold that over and stick it down. And then the next thing that I'll do is I'm going to take that remaining piece that has the flap on it and on the flap only, I'm just going to round it a little bit along the edges. That just makes it easier for us to fold in. So now I'll take my glue. I'm going to place some glue on my glue flap. We can go ahead and bring this piece over to get it matched. And you can use your bone folder, big old spatula, whatever it is you use to get that nice and stuck. Now we see our box is taking shape. I'm going to go ahead and fold that in and fold that in because it's going to make it easier for me to make sure that this box is going to be nice and square. So I am going to take my glue, place it down, then I'm going to take the back flap and fold it in. Then I'll place glue on the front flap, fold it over. And the reason why I put it together in the way that you just saw me doing it is because this is the front of the box and I just want it to be seamless coming from here to here instead of running the risk of seeing that seam there. And so there is my sweet little box. So I can open this, put my books in, and now I can close it. And now y'all, I have a gift that's ready to give. It might be little, but it is such an inspirational little gift that you can give someone. And I'm going to make it even more inspirational by taking this saying and using it on the front. So all I'm going to do is take my scissors and I am going to cut this out in sections. Then I'm just going to see how I want to place this down. So I'm going to take some glue, place some glue on this piece, and we're going to stick it down right there. And then I'll take this piece, place my glue, and we're going to stick this right here and then I'll take this piece add some glue and we're going to stick that right there so then I have these little flowers and butterflies from Petaloo I think I'm gonna see if I can make one of these work on here because I'd like to add just a little decorative element let me try the flower. And so I think I'm just going to take this little decorative flower and stick it right there just to add a little bit of dimension and cuteness to this while keeping it very simple. So I'm going to take some of my glue, place my glue on there, and the flowers that I'm using are from Petaloo. Got these from Tuesday morning over a year ago, maybe two years ago. All right, guys, so my sweet little flower is all done. And I think this is just so stinking cute. And y'all saw how easy it was to make. And this really is a very beautiful and economically phenomenal little paper craft makes an awesome gift. And I think it would make an awesome little craft fair seller as well. So go ahead and make up some of these mini journals, box them, gift them, keep them, or sell them. So guys, I am going to bring that first one back in and open it and take these little books out. I did add a flower to the front of this one as well because I found one that I thought worked well with the overall floral look of this. So very minimal in my embellishments, 
but beautiful nonetheless. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.